Well, they talk to them on the radio, or uh, or they can do it. We can do it during the day without anybody talking if we have to. And then what it is is everybody that's stacked up over the top of the ship. The guy who's at the lowest altitude, he comes first, comes down out of the pattern, and then you saw him enter this uh, mm -hmm. this this 180 degree or 360 degree racetrack pattern that we're operating in today. Um, so they enter that pattern, turn that one, and then. As each one comes down, we four, land one, them, four, right, taxi them out of the way, and then we uh, go. For right now, we just started uh, what are called carrier qualifications. So each air crew has to get a certain number of landings. It's different than the way we operate once we're deployed. When we're deployed, and it's all about, hey, we're just sending folks out, and then we're recovering folks. They launch once, and they land once. Uh, whereas today, we're doing multiple landings for each air crew. Right? But, um, so what will happen is uh, these guys all come down. And we can land one about every 45 seconds is what we try. So launch the aircraft, and then when it comes time to land, we'll stack them all up over the top of the ship, and maybe 15, 16 aircraft stacked up over the top of the ship. And we bring them all back down. They all come down. They take interval off of each other. And every 45 seconds, we want to have an aircraft land. If they work for uh, us, they are working on the uh, catapults and resting gear, and I'm actually you can see a, a few guys over there are working on uh, one of the uh, jet blast deflector panels for catapult number one right now. So those folks work on the catapults and the arresting gear, um, or they work on the squadron aircraft. Right, so that's what the folks in green are. Folks in red, uh, are, if they work for me, they're the fire department, crash crew. Uh, we have those folks uh, that are out there. And if they work for uh, the squadrons, they're ordnance men. Right? They handle all the ordnance that we load uh, onto, the, uh, onto the aircraft. <coughs> Uh, guys wearing purple, you see a few of them over there, uh, over in the catwalk there, they're, 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 uh, they're the fuels crew, right? so they deal with the fuel in the airplanes. Guys in yellow, that's the leadership on the flight deck, um, commonly known as a yellow shirt. Uh, and those are the guys that we, uh, we're looking out for because uh, if something's going on on the flight deck, usually the first thing I'm looking for is, hey, I want to see a yellow shirt. <clears throat> move over to whatever the situation is. Do you have radio um, communication with those we guys? Do. Yeah. Uh, we do, um, with uh, just about all the yellow shirts. Uh, however, most of the folks on the flight deck, we do not have direct radio communication. probably heard me yelling on the uh, on what is called the uh, uh, 5MC, uh, which is basically just a loud PA system, uh, and that's the other way we communicate. So those are the yellow shirts. The folks that are uh, wearing blue, they drive the tractors, the tugs that we push the aircraft around with, uh, and they also are responsible for all the chalk, chalks and chains uh, to tie the aircraft down. Last, color, last couple of colors, uh, you see folks in brown, mm -hmm. they are the, what are called plane captains. Usually very young junior folks, uh, they work for the squadrons, and their job is to make sure the aircraft gets fueled, gets serviced, uh, and it gets turned around and, it, and it's clean and ready to go for the next aircraft. Are there names also on those planes? Some of them. Because yeah. they're soft, mm -hmm. on the flaps, captain, exactly. whatever, blah, blah. Yes. Exactly. Um, and then the last one you see out there, anybody wearing white is in a uh, quality assurance, uh, kind of an oversight rule. Mm -hmm. Whether they work for the squadrons or they work for uh, they work for me. For so, for example, you see the uh, one jet up there working mm -hmm. on the. Uh, he works for me, but uh, he's uh, my quality assurance guy. Okay. they were all set, and then all the wires are set, and then the last thing that we have to do is we have to make sure nobody is in the landing area. Obviously no people, equipment, uh, any of that sort of stuff, don't want any of that. Um, so once that is done, hey, we're then we clear At the, end of the, turn, the landing hands. area. All right. So then we can land the next guy. So now it's real important that the aircraft that's going to land corresponds with the tension that we set in the wires. Not enough tension, you're going to have an excessive run out. All right? And there's not an unlimited amount of space. either space or wire. All right? Eventually you get to a case where you would, what, would it, what we call two block uh, the wire. All right? So that's basically, that's the end of it. And we're either going to stop the airplane uh, or we're going to part the wire. Conversely, if you put too much tension on it, obviously now potentially you're going to damage the, uh, damage the aircraft all right? because there's not enough give. All right? So that's a very critical thing that we, uh, that we do. All right? Now the last, uh, the last thing that we do is uh, um, is we manage the airspace, and as I said earlier, we don't have radar up here, so everything we do is via set of.